Hi there, I'm Peter Millard and in this week's 10 minute workshop we're going to take a look at how to make your vacuum auto start quickly, easily and cheaply. That's coming up next. So I wasn't planning on doing the power takeoff uh, video just yet. Uh, to be honest, uh, there's been so much interest in it, uh, I thought I'd better pop it in sooner rather than later. I don't generally do sort of three videos in a row like this about the same kind of subject, uh, but just for this once I thought I'd do it uh, today. It's probably not going to take the full 10 minutes to be honest, so I'm also going to pop in a couple of quick tips about uh, how to adapt the standard Aldi or Shepak hose to the festal sized round or oval uh, dust ports uh, on power tools, so stick around for those towards the end. But first of all, let's talk about the, the power takeoff and the auto start and what we actually mean by that. So power takeoff and auto start are typically features that distinguish industrial dust collectors and dust extractors from domestic hoovers really. Typically you'll have a power outlet in the body of the machine like this and inside and behind that there'll be circuitry that senses when there's a load on that socket and automatically starts the vacuum. That Usually there's circuitry that actually allows the vacuum to run on for a few seconds as well once the power has been cut to clear any debris that's in the hose. All Festool dust collectors have this for example, even the basic CTL SIS here. If we plug a, say, a sander into this front socket, as long as the switch is onto auto, when you fire up the sander, Off. It goes off. Now because this is a higher end feature found on industrial dust collectors and dust extractors, it probably shouldn't come as any great surprise that it wasn't included uh, in the little Aldi Shepak vacuum that we picked up recently. It's a shame because there's actually plenty of space in the casing for a power outlet for a socket, uh, but for whatever reason they didn't fit it. Perhaps somebody smarter than me could actually fit one into the bodywork. That's, that's not me. But what I have done is I've come up with a way to retrofit power takeoff and auto start really easily to these little vacuums. So the thing that I've been using to fire up our vacuum is this. This is called the Intelli plug. Uh, there's a bit of a story going around not that long ago in the media here in Britain about how uh, it, the, the terrible it is that when you switch off your television or put it into standby, it doesn't actually shut it down, it just sort of blanks the screen off and everything else carries on consuming power. And the idea behind this was a, a, a money saving or an energy saving uh, product. It's actually just a little three way uh, socket adapter, but with the same or similar sensing circuitry built into it. The idea is that you plug this into an outlet, you plug the let's say the TV into the master socket, you plug your games console and your digital recording box into the others, and then when you cut the power to the master socket, when you switch it off, it actually cuts the power to the other two uh, devices that are plugged in as well. And obviously this would be a bit rubbish if it didn't work the same in reverse. When you fire up whatever's on the master socket, it powers up the other devices that are plugged into the peripherals socket. And it's that that we use to fire up the extractor when we power up our saw or sander. Now one of the interesting things about this and how it differs to the circuitry and the bigger Festool extractors that I've got is that sometimes you need something fairly beefy to connect uh, uh, to the outlet on the machines in order to make the vacuum fire up. I used to have a, an original Fane Multimaster tool and sometimes, I think it was 250 watts, sometimes it was enough to make the vacuum kick in and sometimes it wasn't. You had to do it manually. With this, because it's designed to work on relatively low power devices, it doesn't need much draw on the circuit to make it actually work. So how does this work? Well, what you've got to do to start with is make sure that the vacuum, that the extractor is ready to fire up as soon as it gets current. So because there's no visual indicator on top of this uh, work zone, extractor, we're just going to plug it in and switch it on and power it up. Now we'll switch it up to the wall and the vacuum will go off. As soon as this receives power it'll fire up. What we do then is we put the extractor plug into one of the peripheral sockets in the Intelli plug and we put the power tool into the master socket. 
and we plug that into the outlet and switch it on. No power is getting to the vacuum, so the vacuum doesn't come on. The vacuum only gets power when you switch the power tool on. So when you're finished with the power tool, when you switch it off, it does run on so you can clear whatever's in the hose. Now, there's fairly obviously a bit of a delay between switching the power tool on and the vacuum coming on. The Festools are better, they're not instant on, but they're definitely better because, uh, probably because they have better circuitry in them. This is just something you have to live with, unfortunately. Uh, it's the only way I've come across to actually get this to work, and it is with a delay of around about three to five seconds, one of the fastest that I've come across. Uh, if that's going to drive you nuts, then don't use it. I've got to say, if I'm making lots of small repetitive cuts on a miter saw or with a track saw, even with the Festool, relatively fast response times, what I tend to do is switch the vacuum onto permanently on when I'm making lots of those repetitive cuts. But if you're working up a ladder away from the vacuum or the vacuum's tucked away under a bench, then that few seconds delay shouldn't really bother you. If it does bother you, then this little workaround probably isn't for you, to be honest. Now you might actually be thinking, hang on a sec, this little dingus is designed to supply power to TV boxes and gaming consoles. What are you doing running a 1,250 watt extractor through it? Well, this little dingus comes fitted with a 13 amp fuse, which suggests you can run a little over 3000 watts through it at the UK's 240 volt mains electricity. Uh, I've run this extractor and that sander through this little uh, power adapter for well over half an hour and all that happened was this ran a little bit warm. I was actually more concerned about the heat that was being generated by the extractor than I was about the uh, uh, Intelli plug. But if you have any concerns about it, if you have any qualms at all, just don't do it. I'm providing this as a way of quickly and easily powering up extractors like this. But again, if you've got any concerns about the safety or the longevity of it, simply don't do it save your money and buy something that has the power takeoff and the auto start built in. Okay, so moving on. Uh, now the Aldi hose, whilst it is not the best of quality, the end fits remarkably well on a number of tools. It fits directly into the Festool track saw, for example. It'll fit into my Titan track saw. It fits into my Trend T11 router. It fits into my Festool OF2000 router, basically anything that has a rigid round dust port like this, it fits into really well. Unfortunately, what it doesn't fit into particularly well is the round dust port on the sanders. It's just a little bit too big, a little bit too loosey-goosey to make a decent fit in there. Now, in the previous video, I used these little rubber adapters, and these are great because they fit on well and they make a nice tight seal. Lots of people ask me where they came from, but unfortunately I've had them for so long I just can't remember. It might have been bought in a store locally, they might have come online, they might have come with a previous dust collector. I just can't remember for the life of me. But I have come up with a way that lets you adapt the standard Aldi hose onto the round port of the Festool Sanders really, really cheaply and really, really easily. So all you need, as well as the standard Aldi hose, is a pair of scissors, oh, and an old inner tube. Now this is inch and three quarter, 1.75 inch inner tube, so the sort of tire that you'd get off a mountain bike. And you need about 100 mil, about four inches. Cut off that. You'll find that the end of this inner tube, you'll find that this inner tube will just fit snugly over the rigid plastic end of the Aldi vacuum. And only, all you have to do is tuck the rest inside. And then you'll find that that fits perfectly onto the round dust port of the Festool Sanders. Aha, but what if you say you don't want to fit the standard round port, you want to fit the funny oval shaped port that you have on Festool routers or maybe on some third party Sanders. Well then you're going to have to splash out a little bit more money and buy Festool's uh, tool end, mm, what do they call it? 
Festool's D27 reducing sleeve. This is the standard rubber end that comes with all Festool D27 sleeves and you can buy it as a spare part for about £13, £14 on Amazon. You'll also need a slightly longer piece of inch and three quarter inner tube. And what we do, we carefully, because it's a bit of a stretch, Get that inner tube over the end of the festal reducing end so that's well covered and then we use the end of our Aldi vacuum hose and we push that in nice and snug now I suppose you could use that, it's a little bit janky and it's a little bit wobbly but what I do is just push the two of them together and the two layers of rubber inner tube are just enough to get a good seal between the two. That way you've got a hose that will come off quickly and easily if you need it to and you've got a hose end that will attach to any of the oval ports on Festool's routers or perhaps on the oval ports of a third party sander as well. Uh, and that's it for this week. That's this week's quick tips and auto start extravaganza. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. I hope it was worth waiting for. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, give the video a thumbs up, share it freely amongst your friends and do consider subscribing if you haven't already done so because subscribing is the best way to make sure that you don't miss one of my videos. If you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that bell then you'll be notified whenever I post something new. But that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.